An event frame generation analysis is used to trigger event frames by specifying the start and end conditions for a specific event. In this example, we would want an event to be triggered when the press status goes from this running state to a downtime. And we would want the event frame to end when it switches from the downtime state back to this running state. The type of information that will be captured during this specific event time period is specified with an event frame template. The event frame template contains the attributes that will be captured. And in order to set up an event frame generation analysis to create event frames, an event frame template is first needed. Let's set up the event frame generation analysis to create event frames for downtime events for all these different pieces of equipment in our PyBigTires AF database in PySystem Explorer. Event frames generation analysis can be set up for individual elements using this analysis tab. However, these pieces of equipment were built off of a template, so I can set up the event frame generation analysis on the template and only have to do it once. Let's take a look at the templates under the library tab. Under templates element templates, right here we have the press template that all our pieces of equipment are based on. In order to set up the analysis, I'll use the Analysis Templates tab and the process for setting up this type of analysis, either with the Analysis Template or the Analysis tab, for elements is basically the same. We will go ahead and create a new Analysis Template. The first thing that we are going to start off with is over here on the right hand side, giving the analysis a name and a relevant description. As I mentioned, we are going to be tracking the equipment downtime, and I'm going to give it a full description. That way, everybody who looks at this analysis will understand what it's being used for. The next selection we need to make is to choose the event frame generation under the analysis tab. Since we are working off of a template, we'll need to choose an example element to work with. Since at a template level, the attributes don't have defined values the way they do for a given element. An example element is already selected, but if I wanted to change it, I could click on this and choose another piece of equipment. This is basically pulling a list of all the elements that are based off of the equipment template. The next thing to do is to pick the event frame template. An event frame template has to be set up beforehand. The template that we are going to be using is the press downtime template. The main component of setting up the analysis is to determine the start and end of an event. Because they test start and end conditions, the expressions that are entered here must be allowed to be evaluated as true or false. Let's start off with the start trigger and talk about what that means. So what condition must be true for there to be a downtime event? Essentially, that status would have to be equal downtime. To start typing this condition, I'm first going to call the status attribute. There is a particular syntax for expressions and attributes have to be enclosed with single quotes. So if I hit a single quote, as you can see, it is showing us all of the attributes that this template has. And we can see that the status attribute is indeed picked up. And if I start typing, I can just select the press status. When developing expressions, you are combining attributes with functions and the functions that are available are shown over here on the right. As our first start trigger, we want to represent when the status equals plan maintenance or press setup. Another important syntax rule is that strings have to be enclosed in double quotes. I will assign as information severity level. Let's add two more start triggers. Press status equals maintenance with a minor severity level. and press status equals no operator with a major severity level. Once you have your start expressions typed in here, a good thing to do is to hit evaluate, which will see whether or not this particular condition is true or false at the current time for this example element. 
It will also let you know if there is any problems with your expression, uh, if there is an error. So I hit evaluate. If I look here, I can see that in this case, the value is false. So this particular element is running right now. If the element was going through a downtime, this value here would be true. You can also define an end trigger, but it is optional. Why is this optional? If no trigger is specified, the event frame will end when the start condition is false. What that means is this event frame will end when the status equals running, because that will mean the status equal plan maintenance or press setup statement will be false. You only need to use an end trigger, therefore, if the start and end conditions would be different. If we are interested in generating a child root cause event frame, we can check this box here. What this will do, it will essentially take a specific time range before the event and it will capture information as a root cause. This can be particularly important if something that triggered the downtime actually was occurring before and we wanted to capture information for analysis there. I will cancel it as we don't need it. The final configuration choice to make is on scheduling. There is event trigger and there is periodic. With event triggered, if there is a change to any of the inputs, in this case, the only attribute in our expression is the press status, this expression will be evaluated and if it is indeed true, an event frame will be triggered. Periodic is for clock-based scheduling, which you will notice it says trigger at regular intervals. The periodic choice would make sense if, um, let's say, you are trying to events that are operator shifts and these are periodic. They occur, let's say, every eight hours and you are just trying to make comparisons between those different operator shifts and you have events that are set up to capture different shifts. At this point, we are ready to go ahead and check in this analysis. Since I set up the analysis at a template level, the analysis should be started automatically. So I will take a look at this piece of equipment and under the analysis tab, I can see that there is the equipment downtime event frame generation analysis that I just set up. And if I navigate and look at other pieces of equipment, I see that they all have the analysis applied and started. Now I want to see if we are generating event frames. And in order to do that, I'm going to navigate to the event frames tab. I can simply do a right click and do a new search. And this brings up the event frame search menu. I know that downtime was in the name of my event frame. So I'm going to do the white card asterisk downtime asterisk and do a search. Okay, I can see that I have some event frames that have been generated. Let's have a look at one of them. We can see that this one was for press 2 in Houston. If I look at attributes, I can see why this press was experiencing a downtime and how long it lasted. One thing that you may be interested in when setting event frames is backfilling your data to see what did the events look like last week. And that's something we'll show you in the next video. Thanks for watching.